why you're so bored at church when you go? There's no more anointing. There's no more healing. There's no more miracles. There's no more breakthrough. There's no more power of God. The Bible says that, that my house should be a house of prayer. But we have turned it into a social gathering. But we made it into a little barbecue to keep people coming, keep people bringing in their money. If I go to church, if I'm sick, I should be healed. If I'm tormented by anxiety, depression, drug addiction, pornography, lust, I should be set free. I shouldn't just feel God when there's worship. Of course I'm going to feel God when there's worship because He abides in the praise. Psalms 23. But when the preacher's talking, it's almost as if the lights get shut off. There should be the move of God always when we're in His house. For a lot of you parents that are complaining, Why is my kid addicted to drugs? Why is my daughter sleeping around? Why is my kid always watching pornography? It wants nothing to do with God. Well, remember the time that you opened the door to the devil on Halloween? Remember the time that you waited hours and hours in line for some demonic Harry Potter witchcraft? Oh, oh, why is my kid want nothing to do with God? You are lucky that our God is rich in mercy and you can come to him and close these doors of the enemy that you yourself have opened. Oh, Halloween is fun. There's nothing wrong with that. I heard hell was fun. There's a party over there. The spirit of Catholicism is in the Bible. Luke 11, 27. As Jesus was saying these things, a woman in the crowd called out, Blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. That sounds good, right? But he replied, Blessed, rather, are those who hear the word of God and obey it. What is the word of God? For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. What this means is Jesus Christ is the only one that can get us right with God. We cannot pray to the dead, asking for help, praying for them, for anything. Mm -mm. Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit who is with us now. He is the one that fights for us. He is the one that helps us. He is the one that comforts us. Amen. I hope this helps you if you truly love God. So tattoos and piercings. If you already have them and you came to Christ, you're fine. But if you know the truth, if you know it and you still do it anyways, that's pure rebellion. Okay. Now, me and you both know what the Old Testament talks about it, right? So I'm not going to talk about that because we are in the New Testament now. Okay? But what does the New Testament say? The New Testament says that we should not do what the world does. What does the world do? It covers themselves, pierces themselves. Should we do that? No, we should be little Christ. The, the, Bible, the New Testament also says we our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So would you go and, and put skulls on the temple of the Holy Spirit? Would you go and go, I don't, I don't care if it's... it's Bible verse, amen. Don't put something demonic and slap Jesus' name on it. Okay, be very, very careful. Especially if you already know the truth. So I almost didn't want to post this, but the reason why the Bible talks about dressing with modesty is because there's young men like me who struggle with pornography. And when we're scrolling through social media and we see your nipples poking out of your shirt and your butt hanging out of your shorts, you're going to make me lust. Now, there are some days that I feel strong and I scroll right past it because I don't want to see it because I know what it does to me. But there are some days that I'm weak and you caught my attention. You make me fall, you make me hate myself. Me and you both are going to have to give an account of what we do in our life. So if you make me sin, that's bad on me. But remember, Jesus said that it's better that a milestone is tied around your neck and to be thrown into the sea than to cause any of these little ones to stumble. So stop thinking about your body positivity. Stop thinking about your empowerment. Stop thinking of your salvation. So if you've been feeling distant from God, this message is for you. These past few days, I've been feeling distant from God. Amen. Why? Well, listen. Perfect timing. I've been wasting my time watching, forget about it. I've been wasting my time with worldly things and not spiritual things. I haven't been reading. I haven't been praying. I haven't been. So of course, I'm not going to hear from God if I'm not spending time with him. Same with you. Eliminate, have some self-control, eliminate these worldly things and have time for God. Amen? Amen. Forget about it. Forget about the old stuff. Amen? Amen, brothers and sisters. I've noticed I've been getting a little bit of followers on TikTok. Glory to God. Don't get me wrong. I love answering your questions. I love talking about God. I love doing this stuff. But do not be deceived. Just watching me is not enough. Just watching a little bit of Christian TikTok and then carry on with your normal life, that's not enough. Amen? 
Do you know what it really means to follow Jesus? Jesus said to deny yourself. Jesus said that we must be born again. What does that mean? That means when we go into baptism, that means we're dying to our old self. That means the stuff that we used to like, we don't do anymore. The stuff that we used to do, we don't do anymore. Amen? Behold the new. What is the new? The new is we walk in the spirit so that we do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Amen? So, like, is it good that you watch these videos? Yeah, don't get me wrong, but I already know God. I already have a relationship with God. My relationship will not save you. You must save yourself. How? Keep reading, keep praying, keep worshiping. Seek God. Have a relationship with God. Amen? For yourself. So that's a great question. Believe it or not, I actually used to be Catholic. But I started getting curious for God, so I started reading the Bible by myself. And I noticed a few things in the Bible that what we were doing was actually very wrong. Amen. Like first, when I read it, it said that we shouldn't call anybody else father. I was like, oh. It said when we're praying, we shouldn't pray in vain repetition. You know, like Hail Mary, full of grace. I was like, oh, right. It talked about a whole bunch of other stuff, and then I, I just started realizing that man, I'm actually in the wrong. And if I want to get good with God, I gotta change. I gotta do what His Word says. I got tired of listening to some old man talking things that he didn't know what he was talking about well but when i was reading it made more sense i started praying i started seeking i started hallelujah god revealed things to me and he could do the same to you just humble yourself before the holy god and he will exalt you amen how to stop being tempted homie you will never stop being tempted but how to stop falling into temptation amen when you are tempted, you are tempted by your own lustful desires, amen? So whatever it is, first it's going to come to your mind. Let's say it's pornography, okay? That's something I used to struggle with a lot. It's going to come into your mind. And it's like, just look at it. Just look at it. Just look at it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Run away from it. Go to the Bible. Go, go pray. Go read. Go worship. Go, don't look at it. Because you have no idea how many times I felt, I'm just going to look at it. I'm not going to do anything, but I'll just look at it. Every single time I looked at it, I would fall. I would fall. So I learned. I learned from my mistakes. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Fight. Go do something else. Don't like watch Netflix. Don't play video games. Go seek the presence of the Lord instead of the torment of demons. Amen? Don't look at it. Don't look at it.